take a moment and just not think about anything else, but let's just take a few moments and let's just give God a praise. You've got a few more hours in this year. If there's something that he's worthy to be thanked for, now would be a good time to do it. Don't wait for somebody around you to praise God. You praise God for yourself, for your family, for what he's done for you. You and I know where we should be, but let's take a look at where God has brought us to, and let's bless him right now. And if the stars were made to worship, so will I. And if the wind goes where you send it, so will I. Is there anybody that will give God a so will I praise? Wherever you take me, whatever you say, I will do it, I will go. Father, we bless you right now. Jesus, we lift you up. You are great and greatly to be praised. Powerful and holy is your name. Awesome in power. Awesome in strength. Awesome in deed. Awesome in word. You are the living God. Who can stand among you? Who can stand beside you? Who can stand in your presence? We bow before you. And we give you great glory. And we give you great honor. And we give you great praise. I need somebody to shout to God with a voice of trust. Find 10 people and tell them you made it. 10. Shake their hands. Look them in the eye and say, you made it. You made it. You made it. 10 people. still come to pass. With less than five hours, nothing the enemy tried in your life will last. So if you can praise him, my suggestion would be to go ahead and start now. And if you are asking me, why should I praise? God's going to make the devil bow down. So I'll give you 10 more seconds to praise God. And I'll give you 10 more seconds to lift a shout. And I'll give a few more seconds to offer praise. Let's just open our mouths and give it
stars were made to worship so alive. How many people are grateful because God has been good to you and he's brought you not only to the end of a year, but to the end of a decade. Y'all sound like y'all not sure what to do, like y'all waiting on somebody else to prime you. You know how many people would love to be where you are right now? God is ushering you into a new dispensation of his presence. And it's been a little subdued and I feel like there needs to be a shaking right here. Just a, I just feel a breaking. I, I, I actually reached out to, to, to Pastor Tasha. I said, what are you sensing? And, 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 I, and I told Pastor Ab, just be ready for anything tonight. I know we have an agenda and a program and we always got to be just like this. But after the year that some of us have had, Pastor Kenny, I just feel like maybe we don't just sit in our seats tonight, maybe. Maybe tonight is a shout night. Maybe tonight is a wave night. Maybe tonight is Maybe tonight is a night to shake some things off your life. Maybe we take a moment and just bless God and just walk around on our road and just and just say, God, everything that has come against me, I'm shaking it off. Shake it off. I literally mean shake it off. They already think you're crazy, so put a praise on them. I wish I could sing. If I could, I'd sing. There's a miracle in this room with my name on it. Yes! There's a breakthrough in this room and it's here. For you right now. There's a miracle in this room with my name on it. So what you gonna do? To meet the tops, let me come on, throw your name out there. There's a healing in this room. And it's here for me. I need somebody to take your hand and do it like this. It's a, there's a prayer. It's in this room. God, my name on it. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I'm gonna put a prayer. You ought to put a praise on your 2020. There's no telling what he's about to do. There's no telling what he's about to do. But before I see it, I'm going to put a praise on it. I said before I see it, I'm going to put a praise on it. I wish I had somebody who would start leaping, who would start shouting, who would start screaming. one time 
something is something is stirring that normally doesn't happen until about 11:45 on a watch night. It it got here early. I feel like the Holy Ghost wants to stir something. Now don't start, Pastor Ab, all that speaking in tongues and all of that rigmarole and that rave. Here's what I mean. Only if you mean it, you and your whole section need to praise God like every single deficit in your life has been canceled out. And not only health and favor, but money and miracles are finding you. Because the season of debt ends in four and a half hours. But only if your section will join you. So I'm going to give y'all a few seconds. Don't mind us, but we about to go after God. Now see, Pastor Kenny's not doing his job because he's too busy thanking God. Don't mind if the people in the band get up because they need breakthrough too. Savor over our IT. Favor in the house. Favor on your road in the name of Jesus. All right, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Hey, stop it right now. Yeah, you worshiping like you just, like you've been through something. I, I don't know what to say. Oh my God. Did you hear what I said? Hey! You about to walk into a season of oh my God. You gonna open the envelope with oh my God. They gonna call you in the office. You're gonna say oh my God. You're gonna wake up and God will have given you the strategy. And you'll say oh my God. You're gonna have the one doctor's report in this hand and the new one in this hand, and you're going to say, will somebody give our God an OMG praise? I've been through too much to be quiet tonight. I said I've gone through too much to be quiet tonight. Is there anybody else that's that can have that testimony? Not of all the of all the services <laughs> to not be quiet tonight is the one. There's something about your sound that gets God's attention. I want you to look around and I want you to look on this platform and I want you to look behind you and I want you to look all around and I want you to see that there's something that God is doing in this region. I want you to look around and I want you to realize that the sound that's coming from here, that's going out there, that's coming back here is creating something called glory in the middle. And I need you to know that as glory is created, as we lift up the living God, he comes and sits down in the midst of it and then all heaven breaks loose. I don't know. What else could happen in an atmosphere like this? Pray with your pastor. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that the duration of this service as 
the first portion of the service has already belonged to you, that every single component, even this right now, gives you glory. And I pray, by the power of the Holy Ghost, Amados. Yeah. Glory, Jesus. And I pray that you would mark us with your presence, an unmistakable fragrance of the Holy Spirit, and that even in this moment, we can't escape the presence of the living God. And this is your heart for us. Hey, hey, hey. This is your heart for us to be in your presence, oh God. Father, of all the times to be quiet tonight is not one of them. And so, Father, we thank you even now. You brought us through this year. For some of us, this year could have cost us our lives, our minds. It could have cost us our health, and it cost us sleep and pain. We lost our peace for a little while, but we're getting it all back. We're getting it all back. We're getting it all back tonight. In the name of Jesus, this is my prayer. Amen and amen. Somebody lift up. A glory sound to God. A glory sound. Glory. Glory. Tell somebody 2020. Ask him, do you see it yet? I know 2019 was a beast. 2020 is the blessing. Did you hear what I said? It's time to worship the Lord through our giving. It is the last tithe and offering of the decade right now. It's tithe and offering time at Relentless Church. Somebody give God glory. It got real quiet when I said that. If you need an envelope for your normal giving, your normal tithe and offering, and you'd like to give via check, debit, or cash, would you raise your hand so that ushers can serve you? We have a hand right here. We have a number of hands here. How many people have come prepared with their Vision 2020 offering? Come on, praise God. As you are preparing, who's preparing? Let me see, because I see some people, right? Who's preparing? Pastor Ab, I've, I, I, I don't know how to quantify this, but there have been a number of times this year where I needed God to move in such a significant way and I didn't have what I needed, so I sold what I had, and God got us what we needed. I don't know if there's a, a, a moment that you can re recall, <laughs> but honey, we've, we, this, this has been quite the year, boo, uh, and yet here we are. <laughs> and the enemy thought that it would take joy, that it would take our minds, and yet here we are. Um, when you have your offering prepared, and as you're preparing, let me encourage you. 
you made it through another decade. If that's not enough for you to give God thanks and to to be generous on the last day of the year, there's nothing that, that I can add at this point. But when you are ready to give, go ahead and stand. And for those who are visitors um, and you're saying, I, I'm not really certain about this part of service, this is an opportunity for us to give back to God because of how good he's been to us. What I'm asking is for everyone to stand, whether you're giving or not, because the fact that you're here shows you have a heart for God. And we all can offer him something, if not something monetary, certainly our worship and our thanks. And so uh, if you have your normal tithe and offering or your offering in your hand, go ahead and wave that. And then if you got your vision 2020, put that in the other hand or wave that too. Let me see. If you got both, wave them both. If you're waving on faith, put your hand up too. Yeah. Yeah. Put your hand, wave on faith. Pastor, 2019 was a tough year, but I'm believing that by, by the beginning, by, by tomorrow, it will, have, it will have changed. So I'm waving on faith. I'm waving on faith. And so keep waving. Father, these are the gifts of your people. Some is the offering. And for some of us, it is the Vision 2020 offering. A gift above and beyond our normal giving. And my prayer is that you would breathe mightily on every family that's represented. And I also pray by the power of the Holy Ghost that you would meet and exceed the needs of the house. I am praying that you would rebuke the devourer for our sakes, according to your word. But also, God, that you would put the devil under our feet and expose every plot and plan that would seek to harm us and our families. In Jesus' name, I bind sickness in all of its form, fear in all of its forms, and I declare that favor in all of its forms finds us. Wave it. I know you're tired, but it's the end of the year. You're, you've made it. You made it. Yeah, it's all right to get loud. You made it. You made it. God, these are the gifts of Relentless Church. The devil don't like us, but you love us. It all belongs to you. So we give you glory in Jesus' name. With the greatest shout that you can, I want you to wave your gift, follow the direction of your ushers as you give your offering and your Vision 2020 offering. And let's worship the Lord with our praise team. Yeah. 
a song. And that the Father, speak in this atmosphere. I will bless the Lord. Speak as only you can in Jesus' name. I will bless the Lord at most times. So if it's all times, then what you still sitting there for? If it's all times, then this is a part of all times. Well, Pastor John, it's been a hard year. Listen. You talking to me about how are you? You know, there's a whole lot that I want to say, but I'm going to keep Jesus right up here and I will bless the Lord. On a night like tonight, why would I give the enemy any room? If God kept me through my own humanity, my own failure, then surely he can keep his church that belongs to him. Can I get an amen that God is able to finish what he started? I'd like to ask a question and I need you to be honest. Don't give me no, don't give me the church answer. Is there anybody other than me who has genuinely had opposition in some form or fashion in your life this year? Whether it's people, whether it's a spirit, multiple spirits I, I stand up if I'm talking to you this is the only time I'm gonna ask you to stand the rest of the time you can sit there only if you've had some form and not regular opposite like this is like super like like super devils not like regular demons I'm not like I had a cold that I couldn't get up for work no I'm talking I'm gonna kill you and and all of a sudden people start showing you who they really are Devils can't smile forever. At some point, they have to show who they are. I just need to know one more time, one more, and put your hand up as high as it can go. If you've had real opposition, real enemies in your body, watch this, and something that's trying to hinder something you're believing for. Maybe there are people here who are believing for a physical manifestation of a miracle. Something's been pushing against it, not allowing that thing to come to pass. I know that there are people that are believing for children and it's just been, it hasn't been easy. And it's just like one thing after another and more opposition. And then there are other people that are trying to get a business open. And for some reason they can't seem to, to get that final push. And other people, it's people that are trying to stop you. And, and, and I want to make sure, Pastor Q, come on up here. I need you to, to, go, to declare a scripture. I need you to I need you to declare it, but you got to move faster than that on a night like you can't move slow. There's a scripture that we were talking about before service, and I need you to go ahead and declare it, and I need you to kind of unlock this thing before I say what I need to say. Everybody, if you can, I want you to turn around. Turn around. Look around. And I want you to repeat after me. Say I'll never see you again. Say, did you hear what I said? I'll never see you again. Now give God praise for that. Now let me help you understand who you were talking to. See, when you said I'll never see you again, you wasn't talking to a year. But you were talking to enemies that's been fighting you all year. Is there anybody in here that's had to fight an enemy all year long? And it's like you thought I got past you January, but here you come February. And I thought we was good February, but you popped back up in March. Is there anybody that had to fight financial problems all year and, and health problems all year? See, the reason we have to stop and focus on this is because when you've been fighting an enemy for a long time, you plan for them to be present in your future. I'm going to say it again, when you've been fighting something for a long time, 
you get used to the company and you plan for them to be present in your f you plan for them to be present in your future and so the real question is God why God why would you let me fight them so long God I've been praying I've been fasting I've been serving why would you let me fight all this stuff for so long and the answer to the question is is because he had to build a trap big enough to kill them all at the same time I don't think y'all heard what I just said. I said the reason God let all this stuff lag and three and four things pop at the same time is because he was building a trap so that when he killed them, he didn't just kill one, but he killed them all at the same time. Now touch your neighbor and say they all getting ready to die. The book of Exodus chapter 14 around the 13th verse. Moses was dealing with the children of Israel who was afraid because they've had an enemy that they were fighting for a long time and after 400 years it was now time for them to die and so now the beauty of the text is he told them to calm down and be at peace and the reason is is because next to us is a trap big enough to kill them all y'all didn't catch it see the water was the trap and so when he looked at them he said after today you will see your enemy no more because this water is big enough to drown this Egyptian drown the cousins drown the and so I need you to repeat after me say ashes to ashes and dust to dust we speak death upon every enemy that sought to kill us all year. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. We speak death upon body issues that's been fighting me for years. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. We speak death to financial issues. Now touch free people and say ashes to ashes and dust to dust. chapter 19 first Kings chapter 19 if you're a first second or third time visitor would you please wave so we can honor you can we welcome all of our visitors that are here you can do better than that welcome to relentless church we're very grateful that you all are here Matter of fact, here's what I want you to do. I want everybody to go ahead and be seated. Everybody, go ahead and be seated. As you're getting your scripture, I want you to rest. We've had a lot of energy, and I want, I just want you to hear this word. I got a feeling that you're going to stand at some point in the next 15 minutes. That was a trick right there. But I got a feeling some of y'all might stand. Others may run. Some may dance. Uh, and it's the end of the year, so you should be able to do whatever you want as long as you don't hit somebody in the face with your exuberance or oh god <laughs> that's not the holy ghost that was you out of control i've been trying to figure out what the holy ghost wanted to say to you tonight as we leave a decade as we leave not only a season but a dispensation and walk into a new one I first want to tell you thank you for your commitment to the local church. Consistently since me and my wife arrived here, you all have been nothing short of stellar, honoring, supernaturally generous, loving, caring, kind. When you see us in TJ Maxx, you hug us and let us shop. When you see us over there at Publix, you hug us and let us get the Cheerios. 
Well, the Cheerios is for me. I don't eat them. We get the Fruit Loops for the kids, and I eat the Fruit Loops, but I'm learning. I got raisin brand, so I'm meeting them in the middle. It's not really brand because the sugar is on the raisins. I don't know why, but anyway, I'm trying to get better. Pray for me. I've lost weight, and I'm going to keep losing weight because uh, I'm going to live and not die. I'm going to say what the Lord put on my heart, and I told the leaders that serve this vision that after what I've been through this year, I don't know how I'm going to be able to contain myself. So right now I'm in, I'm under control, but about six minutes from now, I'm going to realize that every single thing the devil has tried has failed and I'm still here. I don't, I haven't caught it yet, but Pastor Av, if you stand up, it's going to mess me up. I'm trying to get through this thing. But when you start clapping, it starts, I start reminded that it was a year ago that the enemy tried to take my family from me and my children from me and my mind from me. It was a year ago. And it wasn't the devil. It was me, an undisciplined me, a me that had not submitted, a me that thought that I had walked away from something. And God said, I'm going to teach you something about who you are and who I am. And nobody gets away because my name is holy. And if I let you live how you want to live, you'll think that I'm blessing you while living any kind of way. So I'm going to need to correct you. And I said, God, you're trying to kill me. He said, no, if I wanted to kill you, I'd take you out quiet. When I come for you, you won't even know it. You'll just be gone. If I wanted to kill you, I would have did that. But this is correction. This is discipline. This is development. It hurts because this is what it means to be a man of God. And if I didn't put my hand on you, then you're not legitimate. So let me make it real clear that a year ago, God began to whoop my behind. And I declared this time last year that this is the year of reset. I wish I had kept my mouth shut because reset sucks. Reset hurts. Reset exposes. Reset unveils. And, and I thought they were my friends and they can't stand you. And I thought they were with me and they're actively working against. And God, what is this? He said, this my son is the greatest gift I could give you in 2019. It is the gift of truth. I wish, without music, I wish you could get a praise in your spirit for the unsavory but necessary gift called truth. I thought I was somebody that I was not. And I thought that the, the rules did not apply to me in a particular area. And so God says, let me show you how much patience I've had towards you. I'm going to show you your true condition. I'm going to show you what I know about you, and I still haven't taken my hand off you. I know you don't want to clap, but that's because you haven't thought about your life. Because the truth is, I'm not the only one that God should have taken his hand off. At, and I'm not talking about this year at other areas of your life, at other moments of your life. But God in his love and his patience and his mercy has overflowed and he's kept you and he's covered you and he's forgiven you and he's delivered you. And it's not so you can walk around and judge other people. It's so you can walk humbly before God. Because when you see your true condition, you have so much more grace for everybody else. I hadn't even got to the scripture, did I? First Kings 19, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Ain't it nothing worse than a weak man. Ahab told Jezebel, he's supposed to be the head. He's telling her, you know what else happened? And guess what else? You ain't going to believe what Elijah did. Also how he had executed all the false prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servants there. We can go all the way down, but at the end of it, Elijah ends up at a cave waiting on God to speak. He is at what he believes is the greatest crisis moment of his life. He is under attack. He has served God. Nothing about him or any other human being is perfect, but he has a perfect love for God. He has a love for God and the love for God's word. And, and Jezebel, which is not a woman, it's a spirit. 
Because there are men with a Jezebel spirit. But it manifests in women who hate authority and want to and want to be in charge, and so they manipulate through through uh, through their feminine wiles or sexual innuendo uh, a man and manipulates on puppet strings what he does, and he thinks he's in control, but the woman is actually running the thing because she actually hates God's church, but it looks like. That spirit loves God's church. It's a lying spirit. And when you step into a region where Jezebel's spirit has been running things, it offends the territory. You have anomalies and you can't sleep that well. And, and, and here's the thing. This, the, that spirit wants you out of the region because you expose what it is. High Rock family, Relentless Online community, love you guys so much. Love you. You guys are amazing. Okay, sorry. All right. Elijah ends up at the mouth of the cave. Now keep that in mind. Now go to John chapter 1. I know this, this won't make sense right now, but in eight minutes it will. I'm not preaching tonight. I'm prophesying tonight. So you and your family need to get ready. And you also need to call your cousin and tell him to be here at 10 o'clock because it's going to be packed in here. It's going to be insane in here. And I'm playing no games. And neither is our worship team. We're going to go after God. And uh, after, after all that the enemy has tried in your life and the life of your family and mine as well, uh, I'm leaving it all on the floor. And I want to thank God for our worship team and our dance ministry and our musicians who have been so excellent. Come on have ushered us into the presence of God. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life and the life was the light of men. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. Elijah was known because of what he spoke. He said... There won't be any rain in this region unless I say so. Isn't that what he said? There's another scripture, Pastor Robert says, let the redeemed of the Lord. I've been redeemed. I have some power in my mouth. You should be careful approaching me because heaven backs me. I don't know why people think you're regular. You're not regular. You super unleaded. They better leave you alone. You are not the regular chicken sandwich. You that spicy chicken sandwich. Anybody got extra sauce? Anybody got extra oil? You've gone through enough that you have, an, you, have a, you have a reserve of the anointing for times of war. As long as people don't bother you, you don't bother them. But as soon as that devil rises up, something else in you says, this is what I was made for. Ish, where, where are my warriors? Where are my intercessors? You all right, babe? Because I'm getting ready to preach it like I feel it. Um, the title of this message is real. It's three words. It's three words. Put it down. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. 2020 is upon us. The Hebrew significance of 2020 is found in the valuation of the Hebrew alphabet. In the Hebrew alphabet, when you study it, the, the symbol is not just for one particular word. It has multiple meanings, and not only does it have multiple meanings, even numerical value based on context within a sentence. Now, yes, I went deep because it's tired. It's time out for milk. It's time for some meat. That's the problem with the church. We've been sitting up drinking milk, and the enemy is trying to kill us, and we need meat so that we can build muscle and bone and grow so that we can rightly divide the word of truth. Tell somebody, open your mouth. 2020 has a numerical value, as a numerical value in the Hebrew language 
translates through the word pay, P-E-Y. You need to write this down, P-E-Y. And the idea of the word pay uh, uh, is mouth. The, the definition or, or the, the, the overarching theme of the, 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 the word pay is mouth. Everybody say mouth. This is very important because it is the decade of the mouth. Now, see, if I was at Potter's house, they would have already started shouting, Pastor Chris, Pastor Tasha, they would have already started shouting. Let me, let me, I'm going to come over here. So 2020 begins the decade of the mouth. Now, it's important before you really shout is to understand what the last decade was. The last decade was the Hebrew valuation from 2010 through 2019 was the, the decade of sight or the decade to see. So the decade from 2010 through 2019 was actually prophetically designed to allow the church to see its true condition. What's interesting for me is I got married in 2010 and it wasn't until I got married that I actually saw my true condition. I'm only talking about me, but if there's anybody that can notice that the last decade you started seeing things in your life that you'd never seen before, you'd experienced things you'd never experienced before, God began to expand slowly over time your understanding, your discernment went up about five notches. Who am I talking? Even if you didn't listen, it wasn't because you didn't know. I'm going to say that one again for some people in the back and people watching online. It wasn't that you did not know. It's that you did not listen. Because he loved you enough to show you. 20, the 2010 through 2019 decade, according to the Hebrew, is the decade of sight. But when you get into the deeper context of the meaning, it's not sight just for looking. It's sight to understand and discern what God is doing so that in the next decade, you can say what you've seen and you can speak with authority because you've seen it in the last season of your life. Now, I need help from maybe 16 to 14 people in here. But I've seen some things in the last decade. God has allowed me to travel the entire world. And in the last 10 years, I've stood on just about every platform of significance that people would desire to attain to. And as I've traveled, I've noticed some things that there is a distinct difference in some, not all, but there is a difference between the individuals that I encounter behind the platform and once they arrive on a platform. What are you saying, Pastor John? What I'm saying is this, that there are churches that are absolutely open to lift up Jesus, serve God, and meet the needs of the poor, the lost, the broken, the hurting, and those seeking the truth of the blood of Jesus Christ. And then there are businessmen. And there are people who will monetize Jesus, and they have they have added a monetary value to the human soul. And 2010 through 2019 was designed for me to have an unrest in my spirit about the thing that I thought I wanted. Because when you don't have a father, you want spiritual fathers to validate you and tell you how good you are. And you end up going to places and hoping they like you. And God says, I'm going to take you around the whole world so that you can see that all of this is a system that I'm rejecting and I'm getting ready to dismantle. I need some help. I need somebody to pray me through because what I just said is offending things. And I said, but God, that's going to make me unpopular. People won't like me. He said, that's all right. I love you. I'm proud of you. There is a road less traveled. 
And I believe Relentless is on that road where we actually get in the dirt and get in the grime and give Jesus back to the people that need him the most. Please help me, Jesus, to get it out. Please help me, Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. Tell somebody, open your mouth. This last decade showed me the very best of what the church can be and some of the things that broke my heart. And let me tell you something. Some of the stuff I saw that broke my heart was in my own mirror. See, because for many years, I, I've served men and women of God. I've served vision. And then I've seen the humanity of people. And there was a part of me that was real judgmental, like, how are they going to preach like that? And then struggle with that. I had a whole lot of judgment till it was my turn. No one's going to, no one, no one's going to shout elder and it's okay because, because I'm not here to get applause. I'm here to tell the truth. And what God did is he allowed me to see it in others. And then he allowed me to experience it in my own life so that as I grow, not only do I stay humble and real quiet, but you love people enough to restore them quietly instead of beating them up publicly and trying to dog them out. Because if you've ever been through it, you know how much the devil wants to kill you in front of the whole world. But if we're really family, then I'm going to fight for you behind closed doors. I'm not going to talk about you to people that don't like you. I'm not going to send messages. I'm not going to play demonic games. Five second praise break. Elijah spoke what he saw. He talked to Ahab. And he told Ahab the truth. And here's what happened A Elijah had some boldness. Y'all know he was bold. I want to thank my brother. William McDowell, we, Pastor William McDowell, who uh, wrote that, didn't write that song we just sang. I was speaking with Pastor William yesterday, and he was just encouraging me in my song. We started talking about this, this moment uh, with Elijah and Jezebel because it's the prophetic fighting a system. I need you to understand who we are and where we're going. You need to get this down for 2020 because 2020 is the year to open your mouth. It's so funny because everybody's like, it's vision, but it's actually mouth. But you can't speak it to you. But you have to have prophetic eyes. Because the problem is, ooh, the Lord said to me, he said, tell the people, it's not that they're not speaking, it's that they're speaking too small. Small mind, small mouth. But when you got a big mind, when you got a prophetic inclination you start talking crazy we need some people with big mouths i like i like the loud one i like my my sister when she said jesus that thing just blessed my soul i think god laughs at that he's like hey watch this y'all watch it watch you do it jesus i love that i love that you know why because it 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 unlocks something it 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 pierces through an atmosphere where the familiar has always reigned For the last 10 years, God wanted us to observe the state of the church. And let's be honest about the church. There are many people who don't go to church because of people who go to church. Hey, Jay. I'm going I'm to I'm repeat that one, and I'm almost done. There are people who don't go to church because of people who go to church. And over the last 10 years, the reverence for the church has fallen away. These people are killing people in church. Who was here at the 11 o'clock service Sunday? As I was speaking during the 11 o'clock, does anybody remember? There was a moment when I started talking about that you've lost reverence for the church and they're shooting in church. At that moment, at that moment, there was a shooting in the church. Because the Holy Ghost showed me there's a hatred for the things of God. And, and so and there's a disrespect, and here's why. Because in many places where we say God is, he's actually not. 
Religion is there, his presence is not. This last 10 years has shown me that there's a distinction between a presentation and his presence. I've been to church services and nothing changed. Then I've been in a Holy Ghost service where I was never the same. Has anybody been in both where you know one is God and one is not? But they sound similar. They even look the same. The last decade was designed to show you the distinction between what is God and what is not God. Now what God is declaring in this season is that I am personally drawing a distinction and I'm exposing that which is not me and I'm establishing that which is me. And God says, I'm going to do it by myself. No man will do it. That's why it's dangerous for people to attack you because they're not attacking you. They're attacking the anointing that's on you. Let me get this out. Elijah represents the prophetic. Jezebel got mad because Elijah killed all of the false prophets. Now, you kill 400 false prophets and then you get scared because you got a message from Jezebel. Isn't that deep? Hurry up, pastor. Where are you going with this? Here's where I'm going with it. Jezebel had been looking for Elijah to kill him. He shows up. She sends a messenger to tell him, may the gods do to me and more also if you're not like one of them by this time tomorrow. She sent a message. She sent her messenger. She knew where he was. She didn't go to where he was. She sent the message. This is deep to me. If you want me dead and you know where I am and you bad enough to do it, why don't you just come do it? Don't send a message. Don't write a letter. Don't DM. Don't text. Don't. If you bad, come do it. But this is what I found out about the Jezebel spirit that we are getting ready to break in this region. Jezebel talks, but she can't walk. Y'all missed this. I'm going to say it again. For the ones standing, stay standing. Jezebel knew exactly where Elijah was. She sent a threatening note. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take you out. You won't make it. But if you hate me like you say and God is with you, why wouldn't you just come down from your tower and come get me? Because I'm in front of your face. Because Jezebel knows she does not have power over the prophetic. You don't have the authority to shut the mouth of the prophet and you can't touch the prophet. So what the devil tried to do in 2019 is send a demon to mess with your mind because if I can get in your mind, I can't touch you, but you'll take yourself out. The attack of the enemy was not for them to get you. It's for the, you to take yourself out. It was for you to quit. And here you are on the last day of the year and you still got your hands up and you still got your tambourine and you still got your shout and you still have your praise. And it confuses the spirit of Jezebel because the prophetic cannot be touched by a Jezebel spirit. She can talk, but her words don't have authority. The enemy couldn't take you out. The enemy was simply hoping you take yourself out. 
The only way you could have failed is if you had given up. God needed to see that you would endure and still serve, endure and still worship, endure and still get here. Am I talking to anybody? I need some enduring worshipers, some enduring praisers to give God an enduring praise. All right, now while you're standing, I'm getting ready to say something, and I'm going to need you to just trust me on this. I shared this with one of my leaders, and I said, I said God spoke to me about 2020. It's the year of the mouth. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, Scott, and we beheld its glory. Does anybody ever remember the scripture that says, as he is, so are we? Which means whatever he said, we can say. Whatever he did, we can do. Jesus cursed a fig tree. It wasn't even season for figs. The thing withered in 24 hours. Hear me. You're less than three hours away from the things of your mouth become <laughs> manifesting in your life. Here's what God said to me. He said in 2020, your words will walk. I hope they get it, which means what you say, you're going to see. And, and it became flesh and dwelt among us. Your words are about to begin to walk and move in your life. You've been observing for years. You've been learning for years. But now it's time to establish. And you don't establish with the work of your hands. You establish with the word of your mouth. And the word of your mouth comes from spending time with the living God. Is there anybody that's ready to repeat what God has said? Here is your charge. It's time for you to open your mouth. I didn't say shout. I said open your mouth. So this, was, this is what you need to do when you get home. Everything in here come to order. You're not even talking to anything that can talk back currently. You're talking to your finances. I need my financial portfolio to come to order. I need this, this, and this. I need you to open your mouth. I, I, I don't know why you're, you're... Oh, Lord, help me to translate it the right way. In this season... What you say is going to start walking around your house. And then it's going to flesh. The word became flesh. That means there's a process whereby which what is spoken is then seen. So I need you to speak it until you see it. Speak it until you see it. 2020 is a year of intense focus. But it's also the season and the moment for you to open your mouth and repeat what God is saying based on what you've observed from the last season. Then, it's also the season for the dismantling of systems. And I'm going to end this one right here. If you want the rest, you're going to have to come back to 10 o'clock because that's, that's just how it's going to go down. My weapons, the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God to the what? The dismantling of what? So those are up there. God's about to dismantle the systems that have masqueraded as the church. There's the true church of Jesus Christ, and then, then there is the CPG, the church playing games. And he's going to draw a line of distinction between those who play games with the anointing and those who reverence the anointing. I'm telling you very clearly that 2020 is a year of the dismantling of systems. You will see some of the most unbelievable things in the body of Christ because scripture says judgment begins at the house of God. Why? Because there are too many people dying and people need real hope with a real Jesus, not people that are playing games. Relentless church. There's going to be a church that opens its mouth in the direction of heaven. And we will repeat what God has said about the people God has assigned us to. So when you see the broken, the poor, the lost, the hurting, people that are diseased and hurting and, 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 and excommunicated from society, that's where you're going to find Relentless Church. 
you're going to find us serving people that other people throw away. You're going to find us in community with people that other people marginalize. If you don't like that, you're, going, you're, you're, you're probably at the wrong place. But you're not at the wrong place. You're here. That's why you're here. Everybody's standing. That was so loud. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Tell God, I'll say what you want me to say. I'll do what you want me to do. This is the decade to speak what I've learned, what I've observed, so that your kingdom can expand. This is the dismantling of a system. Yeah, I want, y'all can repeat it. I didn't ask you to, but you know, this is the dismantling of a system. <laughs> this is a disproportionate of a system to assist at assist on my pinky. I know that some people were waiting for the shout, but I wanted you to hear 2020. The word pay, P-E-Y, is not just the word mouth, but there is, based on the way the Hebrew character is written, because the bottom of the letter goes down instead of up, there's a connotation that there is a, basically a, a, a spark. There's an explosion when you speak. Your words in this season are like dynamite. What does that mean? Dunamis. A power that you didn't know you had will be at your house in the next three hours. A power you didn't know you had to literally speak the oracles of God and it show up in your life. Open your mouth. Don't be afraid in this season. The spirit of Jezebel can't take you out. If that spirit could have killed you, it would have. It can't. At the end, Jezebel thought that she could use her beauty to stay in power. She saw Jehu coming and she said, is it peace, Zimri, murderer of your master? And every now and then you can't have diplomats, you need warriors. Are there any warriors in here? Yeah. Hey, need the warriors. Jehu said, he looked up in the Queen's Valley. He said, who's on my side? It was two eunuchs. I know they was on his side. Like they done, they done took me out of here. So I'm, I'm mad anyway. The eunuchs, he said, throw her down. Threw her down. Dismantled the system. She hit the wall. I need you to know your enemy's about to hit a wall. She hit the wall before she hit the ground. And dogs ate her flesh. The only thing left was her hands and her skull. I asked the Holy Ghost why. He said, because even the dogs won't eat what was used to manipulate people. And even the dogs won't eat the mind that was conceiving and devising wicked things. The only thing that will be left of your enemy is the palm of their hands and the mind so God can let you see as a memorial that what they tried to do failed and what they were trying to think about you and plot will fail as well. You need to get excited and open your mouth. If you are here never giving your life to Jesus, or you want to be a member of Relentless Church, it's the last day of the year. So before you go turn up with Jaquan and the rest of the crew, come down here and get saved so that there is no harm or danger that comes to you because those are not fireworks, those are bullets. And so you need to get saved. <laughs> Come down here right now. You know I'm talking to you. I'm going to give you 13 seconds. Somebody needs to join this church tonight. Come on. Right here, right now. Oh, 
Can we thank God for those who have come today? What's the one thing I want you to leave here with? What's the three words I want you to repeat? Say it again. The Holy Spirit's going to drop something in some of y'all when you drive past a for sale sign. You're going to feel something start trumpet in your heart. Go back and say whatever God tells you to say to that property. You need to tell that property, get in my portfolio. Some of y'all need to open your mouth tonight. And I, even as they're here, I need you to start thanking God for your second home. I, and you're still in an apartment. You're not even in your first house. But you need to thank God for your second home. You need to thank the Lord that your business is flourishing and you had to hire 20 new people. You haven't even... <laughs> I need you to open your mouth about your children, about your marriage, in your singleness. I need you to open your... Welcome home on New Year's Eve. Come on, y'all. We can do better than that. Will you all do me a favor? We're going to pray a prayer. And y'all repeat after me, okay? Everybody back there is going to pray it too. Y'all read? Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. I thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my works, but the finished work of the cross. The blood is enough so that I can start over. I can begin again in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come live inside. Help me to be more like Jesus each and every day. This is my prayer. You are my Savior and Lord. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. Can we celebrate our brothers and sisters? Y'all can do better than that. Not only are you saved, but you're a member now. Your family. Let's walk this way. Y'all walk with me. Come on. We're walking with Pastor Trevor. Don't leave. We still got something. Don't we got one more song? Oh, yeah. Don't leave. Let They're going to sing it. So come on. Okay. The chain's been broken. All right. She said somebody in jail want to hear that. 
while they're walking with Pastor Trevor, let's celebrate our, our new members. I'm saying Happy New Year to you all. If you don't stay to the second service, we love you so much. It's the last opportunity for us to just be unapologetic about our stance on our faith and who God is to us. So I just want to encourage you that for the last few hours, couple of hours, three hours of this decade, to be sure to love, to forgive, to apologize, to ask uh, and seek forgiveness, and to let go of some things. Some things need to stay in 2019. Amen. I admonish you not to carry some of the things that you've been carrying over the threshold of the new year because God wants to do something more and something greater inside of each one of us. Amen. Amen. We love you so much. And what do we have? Another song? Hey, we got another song, but I got to tell you, you are ice cream cold on tonight. You have blessed my whole soul. I want to connect the dots. Um, <laughs> listen, listen. Everything that held you hostage has less than three hours. It has less than three hours. In fact, it's already gone. You should kind of celebrate. When you leave out of you need to be blowing your horn. We loud for Clemson. We're loud for South Carolina. We need to get loud for the freedom that's coming. Pastor Tasha and the team. Oh, yeah. One more thing before the song comes. One more thing. Take a look at the video. Yeah, just one more thing. We've come to this part of conference, the end, but we'll be right back in here, sir.